Hey everyone, this is Jeff at Narwhal Labs. My name is Jeff. And I'm here today with... Philip from Denner Builds. All right, so Philip is a mold maker extraordinaire. Uh, he is pretty much the guy to go to if you want a silicone mold. And uh, he came up here and he's gonna teach me how he does his process using, uh, in this case, as few tools as possible, right? Yes. So we wanna try and keep this accessible so you at home could follow along and make your own molds using acrylic and some of the tools that we have laid out here. So Philip, we do need a few materials to do this. We're gonna try and keep it to a minimum, but let's just go down the list of a few things that we need. Uh, we need Smooth On Mold Star 15, and that's just a two-part silicone mix. We need some spatulas and stir sticks. Uh, we need some paint pots for mixing our silicone in. These drill mixers are not necessary, but they can help us out and speed things up with our silicone. And we need some acrylic too, right? Yes, we do. We need it in one eighth and quarter inch cast acrylic. Perfect. So we're gonna head over to the laser, uh, get cutting and engraving and start making some molds. All right, so Philip has prepared some designs for us to cut out. Uh, you can make your own Illustrator or Inkscape. You use Inkscape, right? Yep. Which is free and open source. Uh, we'll put a link down in the description for you to go find that yourself if you want to give it a try for some design work. Let's load our acrylic in the laser. And we peel the top protective layer off. I think you said that helps us out a little bit with our engraving, right? Yes, you get a much cleaner etch and you don't have to worry about trying to pick off all the little bits after you're done etching your, your piece. Perfect, so we'll go ahead and do that. The laser is all finished up. Let's open it up, pull our waste out, pull our pieces out, and go over to the workbench and assemble our mold. Now you see we did run this a second time. We ran into a little bit of a focus issue that we had to stop uh, and troubleshoot and restart our cut. But they came out pretty good. Philip, the finish on these is a little bit rough, but you said you clean these up. Well, how do you clean up your, your yeah, acrylic so th pieces? This is all the dust that's left over from the etchings. Um, I use a, a microfiber cloth with some alcohol on it and all this dust wipes away. And there is a little bit of a risk using alcohol, right? Yes, if you get alcohol on the edges, you can get it uh, crazing and you'll see tiny little cracks on the edges. So try and cover just the surface as you wipe it away and don't try and clean the edges. All right, so let's take these over to the workbench, do that cleanup and assemble our mold. All right, so we wrapped up our laser work yesterday and went home. We're back. We have some tools laid out here to pick up where we left off. Mm -hmm. We have our pretty much fresh out of the laser uh, mold masters, which we're gonna clean up with a microfiber cloth and some alcohol. We have some slats that we cut out on the laser, but you could do this just with a, a knife, score them and snap them. We have our Orcal 651, which we're gonna use as part of our mold and some hot glue to help seal things up. Philip, do you mind walking me through this process a little bit and teaching me how to, to build our mold here? Yeah, uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is clean our masters. Uh, there's a lot of dust left over from the laser that we need to clean off. Um, we're gonna actually use some of the paper towels first to get most of the dust off. Um, we're gonna be using alcohol. Uh, you can use water, uh, it comes off really easy. Do I just wipe this down? Just gonna um, wipe the dust off as much as I can? Or? For the first one, yeah, just get a good bit of it off and then we're gonna dip it in some of the alcohol. Can you just use the paper towel for that too, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Cool. These look pretty clean. They uh, do. All right, so now we can take the microfiber and give them one last once over before we start setting them up. Now I've used this when I'm masking something off that I'm gonna cut on the CNC, and it's pretty low tack, um, so, but it's just enough to hold these down, I take it. Mm -hmm. And they will keep the masters in place and prevent them from floating. Um, and it also prevents silicone from getting under the, under the edge as well, um, leaving flashing that you have to go try and clean up later. So what's our next step? Uh, next step is we need to trim off a piece of aura mask that's at least the size of our framed box. All right, cool. So Does it matter if it's perfectly square? Nope. Um. And we'll be having the sticky side up.
Does that sound terrible? <laughs> so loud. You went like right into the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to redo that and cut a new sheet? <laughs> so what next? All right. So let's go ahead and grab some of our masters and pull the backing off of them. But getting that peeled off is tricky. It's tricky, 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 tricky. All right. So let's put one of these here just to kind of get an idea of measurements. All right. So what we're going to do now is actually lay them out on the aura mask itself. You want to make sure that they're going to fit within here without actually putting these on first because we're going to go through and actually um, burnish the bottom with our fingers to make sure it sticks around the entire edge. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to have to try and pull them off to reorient them because you put them too far apart. And I can just place this right on top of this? Mm -hmm. Leaving at least a quarter inch between them? Yep. And once we get all four of these on, we will go through the bottoms and actually uh, burnish the backs to get any air bubbles out and all the edges will be actually secured to the aura mask itself. And we are putting gloves on at this step um, so that when we burnish the backs and we're holding the masters, we're not getting fingerprints and smudges and oils from our hands all over the, the acrylic itself because all of that will translate to the finished mold. And even just having those latex gloves near where you're working with silicone yes, is a problem, we, right? Yes, yeah. uh, on the latex gloves, if we just touch the masters with the latex gloves, that portion of the mold would not cure. So, super, super important, uh, nitrile only. Now it's time for our walls. Um, we cut these acrylic slats out on the laser. Um, you can also do it on a table saw or with a knife. You can use many things for this. It doesn't have to be acrylic. Even like foam board might work? Foam board, foam core, foam board is yeah. perfect for it. You could use cardboard. All right, so we're using um, acrylic ones that we uh, cut out and we'll place them around the edges and we will uh, add, you know, fasten them in place with the hot glue gun. And we will make sure that we're leaving at least a quarter inch for this one around the outside edges for the silicone to go. And so we'll have that wall thickness on the final mold. Okay, so we're gonna just eyeball it, not really pushing them down at the moment. And the, the thickness of these, um, they are half an inch high. I wanna make sure I leave for a mold this small at least a quarter inch above the height of whatever our master is um, for the backing of the mold. From here, we're gonna actually run a bead of hot glue around all the edges and up the sides just to lock everything in. With our mold assembled, what is our next step? All right, so now we're gonna go through and actually um, check to make sure there's no debris on the inside and remove any of that and check to see if there's anything left on the masters themselves because any oil, any debris, anything that is on the piece that you want to mold will show up in the final, uh, final product after we demold it. So we're gonna go through and remove all that with a microfiber cloth. Got it. And then this is a point where I would also dip in an alcohol if there's oil just to um, get that really released from the surface. There we go. Great teamwork, Philip. All right, so we've got our masters cleaned up. We know that our mold is laid up and it looks like it's sealed. What's the next step uh, in our process? Uh, all right, so normally at this step, I would find something flat and cover it. Um, that way it stops any debris or anything floating in the air from landing on it. That way when I'm ready to pour silicone, it's just pull the top and pour it. We don't have to go back over it again to see if it's clean because we already went through that step. And so now we're just making sure it stays that way. Right. So let's go find something flat. Yep, let's go find something to tent this up. All right, I got something flat. And cool. Let's just get it covered. So we have our Moldstar 15, uh, which we need to do a little bit of prep work on, right? Uh, yes. So first thing you want to do anytime you get um, new buckets or kits of silicone is you want to mix the buckets individually by themselves. It does settle out over time, and you just want to reincorporate it all together. Uh, so we're going to do that real quick. All right. Um, I usually start with this one first since it's the one I normally pour first. 
got our drill ready and we're ready to uh, get this mixed up. If you are using sticks or uh, spatulas, you do want to make sure you're scraping the bottom, um, get into all the corners. You'll feel when it's fully mixed up when everything on the bottom is not, not grabbing. You know, it's actually the same thing with the drill. You'll be able to feel when everything's incorporated or off of the bottom, which is what you want to do. And you did tell me you want to run the drill a little slow, right? Uh, yes. Uh, if you're running as fast as you can, you're really just throwing everything to the walls. To the window, to the window, it's not really mixing it well. Slower mixes better. So let's mix it. All right. All right, we just finished mixing. It's time to put our two parts together. And this is a one-to-one -one mix, right? Yes. It's nice one, and simple. One-to-one, -one, so you can just do it by volume with the markers on your cups or two separate cups at the same level. All right. All right, so let's cover these up for now and get things kind of switched around for pouring. All right, now we're ready to figure out how much silicone we actually need. Uh, so we're going to measure this and figure out how much, what the volume is. Um, you want to do it on screen? I think we have a video for that, and I'm going to put a little thing up in the one of those corners. Look at the corner, click on the link, we have a video. All right, we did the math, um, and we need about 18 ounces of silicone. Uh, I like to do a little bit more, um, just in case there's always some left over on the inside of the cup. So we're going to do 20 ounces. Holding it this way makes it pretty easy to pour from these gallon containers. Yeah. And I just use a popsicle stick to kind of clean whatever's dripping. You'll notice we switched out containers from what we were showing you a little earlier. Um, because of the smaller volume of this, we wanted a little bit more precise measurement. And these cups give us that precise measurement. A little ham fist in yeah. there. I'm going to pull it. Mm. I did say inevitable mess, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's make sure we got the same amount in each. See how much he overdid it. You got like 10 and a half ounces in mine and that's like way over 10 and a half in yours at 11. <laughs> We're gonna pull just a little bit out though. Okay. That's one of the nice things about doing it in two containers if you're doing by volume is you can always check it beforehand. And are we ready to combine these two? Uh, yes, we are. And I can just do it right in here? Uh, yes, we do want to grab one of the spatulas. We're gonna be using the metal one. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. And I can just mix this slowly by hand? Yep. Once you see uh, no color variations and it's all just a single color, you know you're good to go. You don't want to whip the silicone as you're mixing, incorporating air bubbles into it. Um, while it does degas very well, releasing the bubbles on its own, um, a lot of the bubbles that users see are introduced during the mixing process. So keeping it slow mixing, scraping the sides and bottom, um, not whipping it, um, and mixing for at least three to five minutes is what you want to do. All right, we look about good there. So now it's time to transition into a new bucket. You do want to double mix silicone. So we should be good, and I want to remix this here for a couple minutes. Yep. This is pretty well mixed. Yep, we're good to go. Ready to pour? Yep. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to uncover this. I usually take a quick look, but since we had it covered, it's good. If you're using an unvacuumed mixture like this, you're going to want to shoot for a thin stream, higher, and go for the lowest point of the mold. In this case, I'm going to shoot for the center. Do I want to scrape the sides of this to get a little bit more out? Yes, yeah, since we double mix it, you can go through scraping the sides. 
And it may not look like it's getting all the way back here, but it will self-bubble. Got it. Now, I see some bubbles coming to the surface here, yes. um, and they're going to pop on their own. We don't need to use a heat gun or anything? Nope. Heat gun would speed up the actual curing process, and this will be like glass by the time it's done. All, all these right. will just magically go away. All right. Well, we'll come back in a few hours. We'll demold this, and maybe we can pour some resin in it. Hmm. Sounds good? Yep. All right. A little later. All right, it's been a little over four hours. This should be fully cured now. Philip, uh, can you walk me through the process for demolding this? Because I know it's a little bit different than demolding epoxy from silicone. Yeah, so first thing we're going to do is flip it over and remove the ore mask. Just peel it back. Yeah, and I'll hold this side if you want to. Let me get this all pulled off. All right, so next thing, uh, we're gonna just pull off these sides right here. Um, you can just take it and twist it a little bit and you'll feel it release. Came right off, nice and easy. And can we reuse these? Yes, you can. Excellent. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is trim it. We're gonna leave the masters in for now. Um, you can use an X-Acto knife, you can use scissors, um, or one of my favorites is cuticle cutters just any normal cuticle cutter, and you can just take it and run it across the edge. And it just strips off all the flashing that made it under the, the side walls. That is a really great tip. That cuts so well. Mm, it's super clean too. Now we'll just flip it back over and we can pull these masters out. And you just pop them out like you were demolding a uh, normal resin piece. Now these details are very, very fine. Uh, and if you were to run your hand over the masters, it feels just like, uh, like frosted glass. So it's very, very subtle, but the silicone seems to pick that up very well. Mm -hmm. It will pick up every detail. So if you felt the, those same ridges on here, it would still feel like frosted glass. So yesterday, uh, Elizabeth, Philip's wife, poured these for a Total Boat Tips Tuesday video, uh, which you can check out and you should see at some point over on our Instagram page on Total Boat. And this will give you a little idea of what these look like after you pour some epoxy and pigments on them. Just totally beautiful. Thank you so much uh, to Philip and Elizabeth for, for coming here to help show us your process. Uh, I certainly learned a lot about making silicone molds I really hope to incorporate this in my own work in the future. Um, you can certainly check out more of Philip's work over at philip.danner or Danner Builds on Instagram, right? That's correct. Along with this video, you're also going to find a video coming out soon on our channel where Philip goes into some more detail and more advanced techniques when doing silicone mold making. So be sure to check those out over on the Narwhal Labs YouTube. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe and like this video. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day.